Good morning, team. Today we're doing some much needed organization in the office slash electronics shop. Starts with these shelves. Yes, I could have built adjustable brackets for shelves, but these are strong and easy and they look like this when they're done. The shelves are three quarter inch plywood. Full sheets of this stuff are very hard to wrangle on the table saw, so the initial cuts get made on the floor with the circ saw. A cleanup cut gets made on the table saw, and then after taking the final measurement, you make the final cut to width, again, on the table saw using that first edge as your reference. Cut to length happens with the table saw sled. The plywood I have is, in a word, crappy. It's got cracks, voids, and all kinds of things there's no way you could sand out. So a coat of filler is absolutely necessary, and under a painted project, won't matter at all. Speaking of sanding, I went to town on this stuff with an 80 grit belt and the belt sander. Most plywood, that would tear the veneer right off. The only saving grace of this otherwise crappy stuff is that that top layer is pretty thick. The belt sander, of course, does not do a real finesse job, so you have to go back with the random orbit and spend quite a bit of time taking out the scratch marks that you left with the belt sander. For paint, I'm using Rust-Oleum's Ultra Cover, so no primer is really necessary. The final coat goes on with a roller to give me a little bit of texture and to allow me to leverage my helper. Of course, plywood edges don't look like much, so in the spirit of using what I had laying around, I'm cutting up this piece of white oak that used to be a pallet runner to make some edge banding for those shelves. Stock prep is the usual sequence of saws, joiners, and planers, but do be careful working with the smaller parts, or better yet, avoid working with individual small parts where you can. The initial miter cuts were made on the table saw, but you can't beat the shooting board for getting the angles perfect and the length exactly what you need so that your joints come together. I had this Watco finish laying around and the natural color matches the baseboard and floors of my office, so I sucked it up and waited out the cure time for an oil-based product. The edge banding is intentionally slightly wider than the plywood is thick, creates a small shadow line on the bottom, so this thing is face down while I mark for all the biscuit slots. The biscuits aren't the strongest thing in the world, but they do a great job of making sure that I've got a nice flush surface on the top of the shelf once the edge banding is all glued on here. And speaking of glue, you want plenty of it because you don't want your edge banding to look wavy and the end grain of the plywood is a lousy glue surface. So spread it on thick. You can wipe the excess off the paint easy enough and lots and lots of clamps. This is not the time to leave clamps on the rack. Waiting until now to take the corners off the edge banding means that I'm gonna have to go back and touch up the Danish oil, but it also means that all my curves are gonna flow smoothly around the corners of this thing. You could do all this prep work before you finish and before you glue up, but it'll never line up exactly perfectly. Speaking of not lining up exactly perfectly, despite my best efforts, the brackets for these shelves didn't quite work out in a perfectly straight line. No matter, I needed a bigger shelf space in some place anyway. So you move two of the brackets up, you put the shelf back, and voila, gapus deletus. And finally, the fun part, you take all the crapola that's been cluttering up the entire rest of your space and you stack it nice and neat and organized on your brand new shelves. Now, a lot of these things are really just sitting here in piles. They need plastic bins or uh, sub organizers or something to make it not a jumbled mess. But still, it's nice to have all of that stuff in one place. There's a workbench that goes below these shelves. It's very similar construction, basically plywood, only in this case it's going to be two pieces of half inch rather than one piece of three quarter. And I got lucky, the half inch I had laying around is sanded one side, so I went directly to the orbital sander for starters. Finishing for my workbench top uh, is a combination of the tried and true and then what you got to do to use what you have on hand. Uh, those of you who've been around a while know what's happened already. About a half pound cut of shellac put down as a sealer and uh, blotch control. And then I sanded it back to 120, which is a little rougher than I would normally do. Normally I would do probably 150, um, but this plywood doesn't want to take color uh, as is. And then you go putting a sealer coat on it and it gets even worse. So I, I wanted to rough it up pretty good in the hopes of getting it a little on the darker side. Speaking of which, I don't have any idea how long I have had this stain, but it still seems to be uh, okay. It worked on the test piece. This is a Minwax English Chestnut stain. Uh, it's wipe on, let it sit, wipe off the excess. Couldn't be any easier to use. Um, it's not the greatest stuff in the world, but this is a workbench. The problem is I really wanted to stick with Waterborne for this whole thing, largely because 
I've got all of this Minwax polycrylic stuff sitting around from the snake cage. Well, this is not waterborne. Um, this is oil. So it's going to take this thing a while to cure. And then after it does, I'm going to have to come back with another layer of shellac on top of that uh, because the water-based urethane is not really going to like sitting on top of the oil-based stain. And I have some oil-based urethane. This uh, Armor Seal stuff is pretty nice, but I don't have enough. Uh, and if I was going to do three or four coats of this, I'm going to be here a month. Uh, so stain, shellac, and then this stuff, and uh, this will go back on the shelf. All right, well, make no mistake, even with a light seal coat on it, this plywood is some thirsty stuff. So get you some good lights at various angles and make sure that you don't have any dry spots uh, because this stuff will, will soak in and it's supposed to, but there's also supposed to be some excess to wipe off. Um, if you've got spots that look like you missed them, you missed them. The polycrylic doesn't seem to build quite as quickly as the oil-based urethanes. All those coats have to be sanded back to 220 in between applications. Before the final application, I also did a hand sanding to 320. All right, for the top coat, I'm making two changes here. I've switched over to a satin finish urethane instead of the shiny gloss. Um, if you want to build coats, you want to build with clear, otherwise it keeps getting duller. But top coat, I don't want all that shine. The other thing I'm doing, I'm adding just a little bit, like a half a teaspoon of uh, flow troll and a squirt or two of water to help this stuff flow a little bit better. Okay, well, if there's a trick to getting this stuff to go on smoothly, it's to use enough of the product that you don't have to go back over it 12 times. Uh, in order for a liquid to self-level, there has to be liquid. Uh, it's gonna look like you're putting a boatload of this stuff on here. Uh, but trust me, you don't want empty spots. And a raking light is the best way to see if you've got empty or dry spots. Uh, go back and fill them in as soon as you can because this will set up pretty quickly to the point where every time you go over it with a brush, all you're doing is leaving tracks. With the finished bench top safely upstairs and out of the way, I can get to work on the frame for the workbench. No complicated joinery here and no fancy materials. This is two by fours and butt joints. The one thing that is critical is that the separators front to back on the workbench are the right length. Uh, if they are not all exactly the same, then the frame isn't really gonna be a rectangle and the plywood won't fit it. I'm pre-drilling for the holes in the stretchers because I'm using three inch screws and if these two by fours split, then the plywood top isn't gonna sit flat on top of them. The front and sides of the workbench get the same treatment as the plywood shelves. They get hit with the belt sander because the surface of a 2x4 borders on gross, then some fill with the spackle, orbital sanding to smooth it out, and finally a couple coats of good white paint. I did, however, use a coat of primer on the 2x4s because they just have stronger color than the plywood did. First step in installing the bench is to preset two screws that'll line up with the studs that are roughly centered on the frame on the back wall and then to create some temporary legs using scrap 2x4 and these F-style clamps. I also cut a couple of spacers to hold the bench up at the right height in the back. This makes it pretty easy for one person to lift up something that's big, awkward, although not that heavy, and set it in place and have it kind of stay on its own. I had to shift it left and right to get it to line up with the marks I had on the wall for the studs, and then it's just a matter of taking the impact to those big heavy screws and driving them home. Level is pretty important for something like this. My spacers got me very, very close, but it did take a couple of uh, taps of persuasion before I was comfortable driving that second screw in and setting the angle permanently. It's worth continuing to check level as you move out towards the ends because that two by four might not be exactly straight. The permanent legs are two by fours, which are skinned in the half inch plywood with kind of a collar at the top. I built the whole assembly and then cut it to length rather than trying to make all of those pieces fit together exactly. Cut to length, the legs then need holes for the leveling feet hardware, as well as through holes in the top collar for the bolts that will hold the legs onto the workbench itself. Adjustable feet are not difficult to install, but like anything else, I would suggest you pre-drill for the screws and then put these little ones in by hand so you don't strip them out. Leg assemblies are super easy to install. You slide them in place and use the leveling foot to make sure that the thing is tight up against the bottom of the frame. 
a square, make sure that the leg is going straight up and down. Then you just drill through the two by four, install the bolts and tighten them up. Uh, tight is good, over tight is crushed, so be careful. First piece of plywood drops in and is secured to the frame top down with screws. These have to be countersunk because if the heads stick up, the finished top won't sit flush. Now along the sides of the plywood, if you go at it with an impact, you're likely to get some blowout like this. You need to file or sand that down because again, anything that sticks up will cause the top to not sit right. That includes sawdust, so clean, clean, clean before you drop in your nice finished piece. Rough plywood surfaces don't slide very well together, but take your time and get this lined up perfectly. Top is secured to the substrate by drilling from the bottom up. Uh, number six, five eight screws. Not too many of them. It doesn't really need them. Gravity's doing most of the work. Uh, I trashed my other shirt, but otherwise it worked out pretty well. It came out plenty solid for anything I want to do with it. Toyed with the idea of making it a torsion box, but it turns out to be a, sort of an unnecessary complication. Plus, the way this thing is put together now, it's all screws. It could be completely disassembled and removed if need be. So this is all I had planned for this workbench, but now that it's in place, I can see two things I think I'm gonna do. Uh, number one is I think I'm gonna pick up some more white oak and go ahead and trim out the edge of the bench with that. Uh, it's uh, not too bad with the dark wood and the light wood, but I think it would look better if the trim at least was a consistent color the whole way around. And if we're being picky about aesthetics, the bottoms of the legs look a little strange. Those leveling feet work fine, uh, but they leave the bottom of the leg up an inch to an inch and a half, depending on where it's sitting, uh, from the surface of the floor. It looks like the bench is hovering <laughs> over its feet. Some skirts made out of baseboard trim and painted to match might be in order. None of that aesthetic stuff is gonna stop me from moving in though. So uh, in the future, I will show you what the ham shack looks like once it's set up here, uh, what the electronics workbench looks like once it's got a, a permanent home on here. Uh, someday I'm gonna build cabinets that go underneath the wings of this. I haven't made up my mind if I'm gonna do uh, drawers or cabinets or what, but uh, that'll be coming up in the future. Next time, we're gonna talk about why wires are not electrically as long as you think they are. Uh, third harmonic mystery solved. But that's going to wait for another day. In the meantime, questions or comments, leave them down below. Hit that sub button while you're down there. And of course, in the meantime, stay safe, YouTube.